Stangibalisco here from Leed, South Dakota, L-E-A-D, my home, sitting in the driveway with a new acquisition. Here it is, a PAL Star Antenna Tuner. I believe it's called the AT500, something like that. Anyway, right now this radio has an 8-foot whip antenna on the lip of big number 8 fed with about 10 feet of coaxial cable. The tuner is bypassed because this antenna is resonant on the band of choice right now, 28 megahertz. It has a beautiful crossed needle meter, but it needs 12 volts DC in order to function. The whole transmatch actually appears to need that voltage, which is kind of convenient because that's the standard voltage in a vehicle. So I've wired up this 200 milliamps, that's all it demands. This 200 milliamp uh, uh, transmatch to a cigarette lighter adapter, which uh, turns off when I turn the vehicle off. So this thing isn't going to work when the vehicle is off. The radio, on the other hand, right now is connected to a deep cycle 35 amp hour marine battery to keep it independent of the vehicle ignition system and also because I discovered that a cigarette lighter adapter is not adequate to handle the current that this transmitter draws. It gets so hot it can burn you. <laughs> That's not a good sign at all. So here's where we are. We're just sitting in the driveway and I'll show you this this thing right here. Hopefully you'll be able to see that crossed needle meter in operation. Uh, it shows 50 watts output, which I've set the radio to produce, and virtually no reflected power, so that remains at zero. Now, this is connected to bypass the transmatch, but if I want to tune this 4 by force feeding it on a higher frequency, I can go up to 6 meters and I've preset this transmatch with its roller inductor set for 283 and its capacitor set for 30. If you have a Palstar AT500 you'll know what I mean. This switch here set for uh, 80 meters to 6 meters. Coax 1 tuned so it is going through the tuner. Fifty watts forward power, zero watts reflected. Even though the antenna itself is far from resonant on this frequency, uh, the loss in the coaxial cable as a result of that X SWR is uh, so there will be some, but it's only ten feet of coax. So I figure I can force feed it. Now I was hoping I'd be able to pull this trick on lower bands than ten meters. That is to say, frequencies lower than the resonant frequency of the antenna. But alas, it is not to be. This tuner can't do it, and, and very few tuners can. So I just, uh, I'm going to have to use the whip antenna from MFJ for those bands. But oh, it, that one does work great on those bands. The only, the only catch is it can't operate mobile with that antenna on there. Too much wind resistance too much height it would be illegal and unsafe so those are some lessons I've learned here uh, mobile CW W1 GV W1 good vibrations from South Dakota back from my little sojourn until next time have a good day 73 and so long